you're able, let's stand together. Again, we still can't sing. Um, we're hoping for the day when we can. But let's uh, use these words. Let's reflect on them. Let's speak them out. This song uh, just draws us to cast our minds on the goodness of God. To bring to mind all the things in your life that he's worthy of praise for, that you're thankful for. So let's begin our time of worship together in that mindset. And sing of the goodness of God. Amen. He never fails me, and all my days, I've been held in your hands, from the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, for your mercy. He never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Lord, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, we love your voice Oh, we long to hear you, Lord I love your voice darkest nights, you are close like no other, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God, all my life we declare, and all my life you have been faithful, and all my so, so good, with every breath that I am able, Lord, I will sing of the goodness, sing all my life, you have been faithful, we declare it, cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. Yes, and I will sing of the goodness of God is running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, running after me. Oh, yes, your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you your goodness is running after, running after me. Oh, cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am Lord, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. One more time, we speak these words all my life. Because all my life you have been faithful. Oh, we thank you, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, Lord, I will sing of 
the goodness of God. Lord, I will sing of the goodness of God. Lord, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, Lord, we choose to dwell on that this evening. We choose to dwell on your goodness to us. We call to mind all the times that you've come through for us. Lord, that you've provided for us, that you've encouraged us. And Father, we worship you this evening. And Lord, we, we want to tell of your goodness in a world that so, so badly needs it, Lord. We want to sing of your goodness. And what a testimony we have. All my life, you've been faithful. You've been so, so good. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Oh, there is power in his name. There is power in his name. For the storm was rolled away. Mountains bow down before Jesus Christ, our risen Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Come on, we speak these words. He's a mighty Savior, lifted high. The mighty Savior, lifted high. You're the King forever, Jesus Christ. You're crowned in glory. You're King forever, Jesus Christ, cause you're crowned in glory, you're raised to life, and all I say power lives in us. Oh, we thank you. Oh, the grave could not contain the power of his name. Death you overcame once and for all. Oh, the grave could not contain all oh, the power of his name. No, oh, death you overcame once and for all. The grave could not, the grave could not contain all oh, the power. You're the King forever, Jesus Christ. You're crowned in glory. You raised to life. And all the same power lives in us. All the same power lives in us.
you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, Lord, that's our prayer that we wouldn't just uh, worship you here and now in this space, Lord, that um, we would go for you um, in every aspect of our lives. Father God, we pray that our lives would speak of your glory. When it talks about us rising and standing and singing, that's not always a physical thing. That's a um, display in our actions, in our attitudes, in how we live our lives. Lord, would we rise and stand and sing of how great you are. Lord, we ask in your name. Bless us now as we continue in our service. Amen. Um, we wanted to have a, a session of prayer um, before we did anything else as well. So if you've been keeping up with the news, you will know that there is lots of stuff happening in this world at the moment. And um, uh, the, we do have a slide, I believe, about a few things to be praying for. That text looks pretty small, but I am kind of blind. So if you can't read that, I'll also be saying some of these um, bullet points as well. But um, what I thought I'd do is I'd just cover these points um, just very high level and then what would be good is if we could have just some time to pray, um, maybe in the groups that you're already in. Um, if you're by yourself and want to pray, maybe like make some eyebrows with people around you. Uh, otherwise, you can pray yourselves. But I'll just kind of cover a few things, and then if we can just be praying for all or some of these things, um, that would be good as well. So obviously, the first um, point there about the situation in India uh, with coronavirus. Um, if you've been keeping up with the news, it's, it's a pretty um, devastating uh, situation there at the moment. Um, and yeah, there's lots of statistics around how many new cases they're getting per day and deaths and stuff. I think one of the biggest needs they have is um, for oxygen and other supplies. So if we can be praying for, um, for all the supplies that they need, as well as international support as well for generosity for other countries to support where they can and other um, charitable aids. Um, and also for the strength and courage of everyone on the front line. So if we remember when NHS was under the hammer in this country and how much support that we were all wanting to give them, obviously in India, lots of people. Um, so we're praying for all of the people who are helping um, there. Um, and also protection for those, especially the most vulnerable. There's lots of people in different um, social cir circumstances. So um, be thinking about people who have less access to um, help. Um, the second middle column there about Israel and Palestine, again, very um, tragic situation that's happening there at the moment, um, escalating every day at the moment. So um, if we can be praying for um, pray, praying for that as well, obviously the de-escalation of all the um, violence and things that have been happening in the last week, um, and be praying for all the political leaders and everyone who has some kind of involvement in the whole situation, that they can um, be uh, they can have humility uh, and work towards reconciliation, um, as hard as it seems. Um, and also just the healing in general, because this is not a new conflict. It's been happening for uh, many generations and decades. So, um, you know, we, we believe that God hears our prayers and um, we can be praying into that as well. And then just a few other notes there on the side. Again, members meeting, we always want to pray for wisdom, um, for the leaders and just the congregation to be making wise choices. And, uh, and also the rule changes, at, at least for people in the UK, as of tomorrow, unless anything's changed. But hopefully things are changing tomorrow, uh, so we can you know, have cautious hugs and whatnot. So uh, yeah, so if we can maybe just pick a few of those things maybe, and we'll spend a few minutes just praying um, about them, and, uh, and then yeah, we'll, we'll go from there.
Let's just pray together. Um, Father God, thank you for um, giving us the privilege to be able to meet again in this building. Um, Father, it's your family that is across this whole world, and we are just so um, grateful that you are able to be with us and um, continue to remind us of everything that you promise us every day. Um, Father, we bring all these things to you now, um, all the global issues that are happening, especially in uh, India with coronavirus, um, in the Middle East with all the um, tension and violence that's happening, Lord. Um, we just ask that you, uh, in those places, providing supplies where they need to be, um, help, charity, um, and helping people to be compassion leaders around the world. Um, uh, Father, we pray and, um, and we know that you are our strength and our refuge, Lord, um, and who we can trust. And we just pray that um, all of these things, even though sometimes it feels like we are helpless or we can't do anything to change, Lord, we can pray to you um, and we know that you are God who um, provides, you are God who protects um, those who are scared, who are mourning, and, um, and we just ask that you would draw close to all of these people. Um, we also pray for our um, local congregation in, in Reading and also at Wycliffe. We pray for our members meeting later um, in this week. And we also pray for the uh, UK um, as uh, rules change tomorrow, um, that people who have been isolating or not being able to see others would be able to meet them again, um, that would start to be able to reconnect with those who we may have been um, away from, and, uh, and that you would be uh, continuing to help uh, keep everyone safe um, during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cool. I'm going to do the uh, Bible reading for tonight, and it's going to be a passage that you may be familiar with, but it's from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, uh, 13 to 16. So if you've got your Bibles ready, um, you can read along, um, but it is about the salt and the light. So Matthew 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of this world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So if you were here with us last time, we started a new series uh, called Influences, part one, and uh, Pete brought us a message about influences and what they are, and we're going to continue that series today. Uh, Stuart's going to talk about influencing uh, and why, uh, about the whole why question. So I'm going to pray for Stuart before he comes up. Um, so Father, thank you so much for um, giving us the series of things to be thinking about and in all the influences that we have in our world today. Um, as Stuart comes up today, would you just fill him with confidence, um, knowing that he is speaking from your word, and um, let us hear those words, not just as uh, words for our head, but um, make them translate down into our heart. Think about what we can do in our own lives um, and why it's important um, to be thinking about influence and in influencing and influencers. Um, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, hello everyone, nice to see you all. Um, great to get that mask off. I was, couldn't see a thing all being misted up with my glasses. So um, it's good to see so many people here, faces I haven't seen for a while, faces I've never seen before. Nice to see, in fact, probably I have seen your faces, but not, not in this way. We should have our names on our masks, that's what I've decided, but perhaps I'm at a lone ranger on that. I've got three things to start off with today as we kick off. The first thing is, I know you'll be desperately following my own uh, heartbreak with my rugby team. We lost again on Friday. Uh, that wasn't a great, uh, great performance. It was great to see it, but not the, not the loss. Um, so that was a shame, but I'm wearing my badge with pride this evening. The, the second thing to say is that we, um, you know, we welcome so many people here. I'm, I'm conscious myself having a daughter who's at university that she finishes her year very soon, which is kind of unbelievable, it's only May. Um, for those of you who are studying in Reading, it's great to see you here. Um, at some point you'll be going back, I suspect, to your, your homes where you, you live normally. Um, we are, whilst we're not streaming this service, we do post online, it's being recorded now, it's being posted online 
Oh, on YouTube, uh, there's that thing called YouTube, apparently, that we can watch things on. So do please keep in touch with what we're doing over the next few months. And, um, you know, with your email addresses, if you can let us have your email addresses, fill out, there must be a form, maybe write on there or hand it to one of the stewards uh, at a socially distanced way, um, then we can keep in contact with you through the summer as we, we connect with you what's going on. And, and the last thing to say as we kick off, um, as a 6 p.m. family, as a 6 p.m. leadership team or ministry team, we're really keen to start meeting more regularly than once every three, month, three, three months, once every three weeks. It's really tough uh, getting things organized, and once every three weeks is about the capacity we've got to organize, okay? So we're trying to do it more regularly. We're trying to go every two weeks, um, and, and that takes a bit of a change. That takes a bit of everyone getting involved. So please watch this space. We are on a three-week pattern at the moment. It might go to two weeks very soon, um, but please watch out the, the notices. Please watch out the announcements to see what's coming up. So, and if you can get involved to help, wow, that'd be fantastic. Anything you see going on today and anything you don't see, uh, things going on in the background, then great to get your support as well. It'd be really, really good. The more, I mean, church without rotors is, doesn't, you know, we need a rotor. We've got loads of rotors we can fill up, so please... Please do that. It'd be fantastic. Um, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. You've given us your word. Um, and I pray this evening that we will hear from you. That whatever I say in the next X number of minutes will be, Lord, words from you. Uh, and we can hear from you. Not from me, hear from you tonight, Father, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So as Angus said, and thanks to Angus for leading us today and for the band leading us today, we're here again to think about the whole thing about influences, influencers. We're on a three-week series. The first time, thing we looked at last time is what are we influenced by, and Pete helped us with that. Today we're looking at why should we be influencers. And the next time, the last in this series, we'll be talking about how we can be influencers. Now I guess number three presumes number two you tick and go, hey, that's great. So there's, a, there's an assumption there. Now, some of the things Pete talked about, I'm not going into the science he talked about because I don't understand it, but last time he helped us think about what we're influenced by. He said things like, I choose what influences me. He also mentioned that technology companies play on our influenceability. Now, I think that's a word I made up rather than Pete, but they play on our influenceability. We are being trained to consume. That can become an idol to us. And it's not a case of whether we do or do not worship. The question is, what do we choose to worship? So one of the things I wanted to ask myself, what is a definition of influence? Now, a Bing search defines influence as the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. Now, I also searched online into the world of influencing uh, and came across a website encouraging people in their desires to be influencers. And I had a number of articles on there, such as grow to 100,000 your Instagram followers organically using successful inf influencer strategies. It also said forget influencer marketing, start influencer advertising, that's what you need. And then also, how to make influencer outreach work and secret ways to make, get more followers. Now, there is a lot of hype about uh, being an influencer, and this is focused a lot on uh, social media. It seems to be vogue to be an influencer on social media. But what's your reaction when you see an influencer? Do you say, wow, they are really convincing. I must go and buy that thing. Is that your reaction? Or could it be, I can't believe anyone actually believes any of that rubbish. It's absolute, you know, rubbish. Or they've got really valid views. Or they really annoy you, me. The fact is that someone who's seeking to influence typically sparks a reaction. Now, I know I've said this in the past, but a few years ago, I thought I was an influencer. I was 15. It was 1985. Yes, that did exist. And I attended my first ever rugby cup final at Twickenham and I was supporting the mighty Bath it was fantastic I was very enthusiastic to support my team 
And whenever the opposition had a penalty kick, the stadium went silent. Apart from me who shouted at the top of his voice, Miss it! I did get on rugby special that evening, it was very exciting. They heard my, no my, my voice. Now I suspect my attempt, and forgive me for waking people up at the back, my, I suspect my attempt um, at influencing had a number of different reactions from people. Most of them probably weren't that positive, as probably your reaction was to me shouting then, so my apologies. Now being an influencer isn't about the size of our social media following, but about something in our lives, words, actions, that causes a reaction in others. But you know, influence are not a new phenomenon that's, that's emerged through social media. Influence go back many years, decades, centuries. Think back as far up with your knowledge of history as you can, and you'll find an influencer. The question today is why should we be influencers? Now, I've got three reasons why I think we should be and should be prepared to be influencers. The first um, is that Jesus was an influencer. From birth, Jesus influenced people. In Luke 2.34, it describes Simeon, who was a righteous and devout man, who'd received a promise, promise that he would not die before he'd seen the Lord's Messiah. Now, Simeon blessed Jesus as a child, and he said, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. As Jesus was growing up, people were aware of his level of learning and understanding. At 12 years old, he was in the temple courts, sitting with the teachers, asking questions. And Luke 2.47 explains that everyone who heard Jesus, everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. Jesus had an impact even at 12 years old. As an adult, Jesus had an influence on people. He drove out demons, Mark 1.28 says, and news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. He healed people. For example, a man covered with leprosy, Luke 5.15. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. He challenged the thinking of the Jewish leaders. And he walked up to four blokes, fishermen, and invited or instructed them to follow him because he had a job for them to do. And he was going to train them to fish for people, to influence other people. Throughout his life, Jesus influenced people, right up to his death and beyond. When he was crucified, there were two others, criminals, also crucified, one on Jesus' left-hand side and one on his right. And Luke 23, 39 records that one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence. We are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Now finally, after Jesus had died, a centurion who witnessed everything had a reaction. Luke 23, 47 says, The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. So in summary, my first point is that Jesus was an influencer. But is it enough to conclude that Jesus was an influencer? Well, what, our, what might our reaction be to this? Well, it could, be, it could be passive. We might stop and just respond as if we'd seen a movie. Yeah, that was nice. Let's go to McDonald's and grab a burger. We could simply react in this passive way. Another reaction we might have is simply to say, well, yes, I agree. The Bible talks about Jesus being an influencer, but he was the leader of a new movement. Of course he was going to influence. That was the whole point of him being here on earth. It was fine for him, but it's not really for me. It's not really my thing. To do this totally misses the point of the gospel. Jesus influences us so that we can follow him and become like him. We are both transformed and called to call others into God's kingdom and transformation. 
to the vision of his church is transforming lives through Jesus Christ's love. So in a way, saying it's okay for me, for Jesus, sorry, saying it's okay for Jesus but not me is a bit like reading a great novel and stopping halfway through. Great story so far, I think I'll stop there. You never get to the really good bits, living with Jesus and seeing his kingdom come in your life and in the lives of others. The ending is the most exciting bit. To stop halfway through is to miss the finale. So what is the rest of the story? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. John 13, 34 to 35 says, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. By this all people will know that you are my disciples. And Philippians 2, verses 3 to 8, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value your others above yourselves. Not look into your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in obedience as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The rest of the story is that in our lives, by God's grace and in his strength, we are to become more Christ-like. Simply put, if Jesus did it, we, we should seek to do it too. So the second point is that we are called to become like Jesus. Now the final point I want to submit to you is that Jesus commanded us to be influencers. Um, Angus read just now the passage in Matthew about salt and light. So in Matthew 5, 13 to 16, Jesus gave this sermon to a crowd of people, often called the Sermon on the Mount. And part of that sermon, he gave instructions about various aspects of the lives of people. And he did talk about being an influencer. He said we should be salt and light. I'll read that bit of the passage again, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and give its light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus called us to be salt and light. Well, what does that mean? Well, I, many of us may have heard before that, you see, the role of salt was a preservative for food. It stops food rotting, but it also adds flavor to the food. If you add salt to food, the taste of the food is enhanced. So in both of those situations, the role of the salt is to influence the food for good. In the same way as Christians, in the way we conduct our lives, we are instructed to impact and enhance situations around us. We are called to influence the world we live in. Light is also used in, in the uh, verses just now. In pitch dark with no light, you cannot see anything. But when you have a source of light, the darkness disappears. In the same way, by the good deeds we are to do, we are light in the world. We can influence the world around us in our day-to-day -day lives, the aim being, of course, not so people see us, but so we bring glory to God. That's the aim. Paul, who'd been an influenced by Jesus, um, taught Timothy about being an influencer. And he said uh, to Timothy, don't let people look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 
We're not being influenced for, for our own opinions, but for Christ's. So our age, our experience, our cleverness, that doesn't matter. Paul is telling Timothy he should set an example in the way he conducts his life. Now, I'd say the last and many ways the most compelling reason why we should be an influencer is set out in the last section of Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Also called the Great Commission, many of you would have heard that many times, and it's probably one of those clearest reasons why we should be influencers, because we were commanded to by God. My third point, then, is Jesus commands us to be influencers. So I've covered this evening three points. Jesus was an influencer. We are called to be more like Jesus. Jesus commands us to be influencers. So I want to submit to you all, then the question shouldn't be, why should we be influenced at all? But instead, when we influence, will we influence for good or bad? So I wonder how you respond to what I've said this evening. And it may be you feel like being an, being an influencer, you've got to be in the limelight. I look at all those social media influencers with you know, so many likes or whatever you do these days and so many um, you know, followers and what have you, millions. I haven't got that. I've got about 20 on my Twitter account and no one's interested in what I say about tax. I understand that. But you might say, that's really not my thing. I can't really influence it, all that limelight stuff. But being an influencer doesn't mean you have to be in the limelight. How many people influence others but aren't craving the limelight? Food share happens here regularly, and the group of people who come to lead the group have a profound influence on the people who come here with a need for food. Now, we know, many of us know the leaders of that group. They're not craving the limelight. They're craving the opportunity to show the love of Jesus to people in need. Now, we're shortly going to have a, another time of uh, song worship. Um, and uh, I've invited Joe to, to quietly play his guitar. I wasn't saying quietly for Joe there. I was just, you know, anyway, playing his guitar. So we can, we can um, spend a few minutes reflecting ourselves. Now, uh, reflect on your own or, or turn your chairs around in a, in, a, in a very socially distanced way. You can rotate on, your, on the pivot on the spot, if you like, or, or just on your own. But maybe... Um, have a reflection on two things. So the two things to reflect on, what effect did Jesus have on the people he influenced? And the second one is, Jesus calling you to be an influencer? And if so, in what areas of your, of your life? So we'll spend a few minutes reflecting on those two things at the moment. I said either on your own or turn your chairs around if, if others want to do that um, then that's great and then Joe will lead us in some sung worship with the rest of the band, thank you
just encourage you to uh, continue to dwell on those questions just as we use this song. Is Jesus calling you to be an influencer? And if so, in what areas of your life? Just bring that before him and ask him what it is that he wants you to do differently maybe in this coming week and ask him to lead you in his love as he would have you go. Just going to use this song together. The words speak of doing just that. So let's continue to reflect in that way. Feel free to stand or to sit or whatever you'd like to do. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Lord, we live for you. You're holy. Holy, there is no You're worthy of every song. You're worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Oh, in every moment, you're worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Lord, we live for you. Jesus is your name, Jesus the name above every other name, Jesus the only one you could ever say, Lord you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, Lord we live for you. Yeah. 
me use this chorus one more time. I encourage you to pray these words as we sing them. Show me who you are. Fill me with your heart. And lead me in your love to those around me. Just as we've been reflecting on those questions. Just bring that to the Lord. Just ask him where he would lead you in his love to those around you. You know, he's put you wherever you are, in your work, in your university, in your school. He's put you right there and he can use you in that place. Part of being an influence for his kingdom is believing that. Believing that he's able to work in you whatever situation you're in good or bad and trusting that it's all for his glory just just use this chorus one more time there's no one like you Lord there's none besides you and Lord show me who you are fill me with your heart and lead me on to those around me we ask you're holy there is no one like you none besides you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those one more time we sing it holy there is no one like you there is none besides Fill my life upon your love. Oh, that all might see and know who you are, Jesus. Oh, you're a firm foundation. You're the hope for the nations, Lord. Would you fill us with your spirit as we go, we pray, Lord. Oh, we build our lives on you. I will build. So I no one like you, there is none besides you, open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Lord, we ask it. Father God. Lord, I pray you'll lead every single one of us here, Father God, into the purposes that you want us to go into, Father God, and be the influ- influences that you want us to be, Father God. And I pray without fear, Lord, that each and every one of us will follow your guidance and the leading of your Holy Spirit as well. Out in the world with our friends, out in the areas of our work, Father God, as well as within the church, Lord lead us each and every one of us as individuals, Father.